All right, welcome to my sixth requested tutorial on LibGDX, and in this tutorial we are going to talk about pooling. <laughs> yes, um, so pooling is a way that we use in our program um, to, at first, uh, not need so much uh, computing power and to save some memory. So, at first we are going to set something up um, that definitely needs pooling. So we are creating a new class and call that pooling uh, tutorial and it's going to implement the screen. There it is. And we need a sprite batch. My settings for the keyboard are wrong. Okay, um, and then we set all. I uh, set up all that standard stuff like gdx dot gl. Yeah, my PC is fast today. Again, gl dot gl clear color zero 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 one. Gdx dot gl dot gl clear dot color yeah also gl color buffer bit okay then batch dot begin and batch dot end but we're not going to draw anything yet um create the batch just pause the batch this pause when we change the screen. Fine. We're not going to worry about resizing because this is just an example. So let's make something that is pretty resource heavy where we need a lot of objects um, in a short time. So we want to throw objects into wherever and um, delete them. So we need a lot of temporary objects. Um, for that I'm going to uh, create a class called uh, water, an inner class in this pooling tutorial. And yeah, this is going to hold a texture. Um, yeah, texture is fine. Also, it's going to have a position. Oops, float. And width and height. I'm going to be able to do this. Yes. Yes. Hopefully. Um, what's your problem there? Huh? Am I too stupid to set up some variables or what? Oh, come on. Oh, obviously. I'm, I'm really too stupid to set up variables. What's happening with me? So, alright, we got some variables here. And then we make a constructor for the water, which is going to take all these things. So, texture, texture float x, float y, float width and float height and then we just set them. Great. Um, we want to d uh, draw these water drops on the screen, so we are going to create some draw method, which is taking the sprite batch to draw on, and say batch dot draw. And is there something like, yeah, that's good. Texture x y width and height can just stay like that. Um. Okay. Is this all we need? I guess. 
uh, we're just going to make these public so we don't need getters and setters um, alright so now we create um, something that yeah puts these actual water drops onto the scene right now we just have the possibility to do it but we're not doing it so let's set the input processor to a new input processor which we're gonna import and what? oh like this obviously and we need to add the unimplemented methods uh, we don't worry about all of these we just worry about um, touch direct so instead of actually having these all in here because this is an interface um, we're going to use some other way just by the way it doesn't really matter um, you can create a class okay actually let's do that um, I'm just going to create like wherever I'm going to delete it afterwards anyway um, a new class call that input listener or something make it take the input processor class um, interface and there we go we now got a class that implements this interface so we can create a new input listener of course we need to import it hello okay and we are taking the one that we just created is that this one yep and now we can choose which methods we want to override we just want touch direct and we're going to return true so the event is consumed and here we are going to add a new drop to the scene so let's create an array of currently active drops currently uh, the drops that are currently on the scene um, array of water drops so if you don't know the com.logic.gdx.utils.array class it's pretty much just an extension for the array like for usual arrays like this water you can use it pretty much like this but also a little bit like a list it's just more useful and really not complicated you're going to see why so let's create this new guy drops equals new array for water and then drops.add new water with screen x uh, at first the texture let's create the water texture up here private texture um, drop yeah that's okay drop texture whatever and create that down here drop texture equals new texture image drop.png so what this image drop.png is is it's just this here yeah some Google images water drop that I put into this project so drop texture and we want to dispose the drop texture drop texture dot dispose and the constructor also takes the position and the width and the height so screen x minus dr uh, 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 whatever screen x um, screen y width like 50 height like 70 it doesn't matter anyway and there we go this might already work or oh, I forgot something and everything is going to be horrible I have no idea let's see okay it's working so what is that that's pretty cool no I think that's yeah we still need uh, to 
change this <laughs> to the actual pooling tutorial class, not just the test class that I wrote before. Okay, so now we see what's actually going on. Um, nothing. Right, because we don't render the drops yet. That makes sense. So for ev every water drop in the drops array, we want to render it. So drop dot draw with batch. All right. Now we can put drops onto the scene. So there is one issue that uh, is weird. So if I draw down here, the drops are created up there, and if I draw up here, they are created down there. So what? Why is that? That makes no sense. Well, that is because the input system in libgdx goes from the top left to the bottom, so it's a, a standard um, screen coordinate system. But everything else in libgdx uses the Cartesian or whatever it's called coordinate system, which begins in the bottom left. So yeah, it, it thinks the input system thinks we are creating something. Well, yeah, you know, you know what I mean. Um, these these were just not really compatible, so we have to convert the screen y um, value here uh, to convert from the input system to Cartesian coordinate system. We at first take the screen y, but negative, and then add the screen height uh, height just like that. And now it should be all fine. Yeah, we can now draw drops onto the scene. And they are there forever. And they are a lot. So we want the drops to disappear after some time. Uh, for that we're going to add a new variable called life. And that's going to be two seconds of life. And then every time we draw this thing we want to update the life variable minus equals gdx dot graphics dot get delta time so the time since last time this uh, has been drawn and then if life is smaller or equal to zero we want to remove it from the drops array drops dot remove value um, this so this water drop and we want to actually check if it's that actual water drop. So we want to use the equals equals comparison instead of the dot equals comparison. So we say true in here. And the program just crashed, but whatever. Um, now this should already work, probably. We create some drops, and after two seconds they disappear. Not really beautiful, but it works. So Right now, we are doing it the following way, which is a problem. Um, we got this, and let's just say that all of these yellow coinish looking things here are water drops. Um, so we are in a program here, this gray area is a program. This is the active water drops array, and this down here is the garbage collector, which you probably know when you're programming Java. So we create some drops put them into the active array and then after two seconds we say okay they are not needed anymore so we take them out of the active array then the garbage collector sees that these are not used they are not referenced to by any variable and he eats them so that sounds all fine we get rid of the drops we have the memory back available but it actually isn't and that is because there is something called memory fragmentation so imagine this is our memory, and imagine these are the drops. Um, they are not all the same drops right now, but let, uh, just imagine this is one big object, and the oops, and this is one small object. So if we take them and move them into the memory, so that we are using them, if we create them, we see that they fit perfectly into our memory. But imagine you would at first create a little one, uh, an object that doesn't take up so much memory, put that into the memory, 
then create another little one put that into the memory and then say okay I don't need the first little one anymore so delete that from your memory and paint is horrible to show things anyway like this fine um, now we got one little object in our memory and we know that one little object and one big object fit into our memory but now if we try out to actually put the big object into our memory we see uh, I can't put it on the left because uh, there is no space on the left and I can't put it on the right because this little object takes up all of this memory even though it doesn't need it at all and what's my computer doing with the sounds I don't know sorry for that um, anyway so this is called fragmentation we have three fragments in our memory two unused which could be used but they are blocked by this one because it's in the wrong position so that's why we use pooling because in pooling we don't just remove let me show that again we when we have two little objects here we don't just remove this one so the space is free again we actually keep it because we know that later we are going to use another object of this one here anyway so let me show you how that works um, pooling alright so here are our objects again and when we create them and put them into the active uh, array and I don't cut these like an idiot but looks like I'm too dumb alright we put them into the active array and then we say okay the two seconds have passed the water drops should disappear we take them out of the active array again so usually the garbage collector would eat them all but now we don't just let them disappear we put them into the pool because we know that in just a little bit time um, we're going to need some of them again anyway so instead of letting the garbage collector take care of them every time we just move them between the pool and the active array whoop active not there anymore active not there anymore stored for later usage this makes the garbage collector happy because he doesn't have to do anything and if it doesn't have to do anything it obviously needs less computing power and the memory doesn't get fragmented so let's move this concept into the code at first if we want to move something into the pool we obviously need a pool so there is a pool class in libgdx let's just see the source of this one if we choose the right one there we go that's the pool class in libgdx and it's got all kind of methods blah 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 we don't need to know that um, but it's got this one here abstract protected t new object so this t is because of um, the t up here the pool is a generic and um, abstract because yeah there is no method body we have to define that one ourselves so it's intended to be actually um, extended so let's go ahead and extend such a pool which we are going to call swimming pool because we add water in it yeah I'm very funny today um, extends the pool for water and actually this is a class and we want to import the pool and we want to add the unimplemented methods and there it is the new object method um, this is just used to create a new object if there is none in the pool um, let me show you that again because in the beginning the pool is empty there is nothing then we say we need something to put into the active array and we ask the pool to give us something but the pool doesn't have anything so he needs to know how to create new objects give them to us so we can put them into the active array so this is where we tell the pool how to create new objects and we're going to say actually we're going to say pretty much the same as here but we don't have a screen x and y so new water uh, with a drop texture at position 0, 0 and 
50, 70 width and height again. And the program crashes, but whatever. Um, now we want to get such a pool into a program. Private swimming pool. Pool. And use the pooling uh, when we put something into the active array. So this is where we put something in the active array and right now we just create a new water object every time. But we don't want to do that. Actually, let me save this one here because I don't want to type it again. Um, great. So at first we want to get a new water drop which is going to equal pool.obtain so obtain is when we ask the pool to give us an object and then he sees if he has some or if he needs to create new ones. So right now he needs to create new ones because this is the first time we call pool.obtain. Um, then we want to set the x and y position of the drop. And there we go. And the width and the height we don't need to uh, take care of them because they are already 50, 70. Um, yeah, now we just need to add this drop into the water array. Drop dot add. What drops dot add? Uh, drop. Fine. I think this is going to work. For now. Not really. Why is that? Oh, okay. Obviously. Uh, stupid little mistake. Chip, 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 chip. Yeah, a null pointer exception for pool.obtain because the pool doesn't exist yet. Pool equals new swimming pool. And we can give it the initial capacity, so yeah, I don't know. 100? Actually, we can't even do that, right? You could do that with a pool, but. Yeah, we're just on. We're just not doing that. Um, okay, so now it should work. Okay, there we go. These are now created by the pool. Um, the pool sees he has none of these objects, so he creates a new one using the new object method that we overwrite it, overridden, that we overwrote, whatever, and. Um, yeah, then we put them into the active array and after two seconds they disappear again. Um, okay, so right now the pool is not really useful because they disappear but we don't say we want to put them back into the pool. So we have to call when um, life is smaller or equal to zero and we remove it from the active array. We have to say that we don't just want to remove it from there and let it, f I don't know, go into the void and be taken by the garbage collector, but we want to actually return it to the pool. So we call pool.free this. So this is just a water drop again, and pool.free is actually a little bit confusing name in my opinion, but it means nothing else than this object is free from usage, it's available again, so the pool takes it back. So free isn't taking something out of the pool, it's putting it back in. So, yeah, this is going to look exactly the same. But now the objects aren't going into void, they're actually going into the pool. Um, yeah, let's make that a little bit more visible by actually saying, um, saying yeah, I don't know, that's actually fine already. But there's one more thing that the poolable stuff in libgdx provides us. And we at first have to need this. Yeah. Because otherwise that's kind of weird. Um, let's see, what kind of use case can we get for this? It's not necessary, but you should know about it, so... Um, Let's say the pool creates us objects uh, that are a little bit bigger, so 70, 90, and 
we actually want objects that are not 1790 but that are yeah I don't know right now we have some 1790 objects so that's a b uh, bigger drops but when the drops are put back into the pool we want to see that they weren't created new but they already were in there so we want them to be a little bit smaller um, to do this we can let the water class implement the poolable interface which is nothing else than this reset method in here and in this reset method we can now say with equals 50 and height equals 70 also since this is a reset let's say x and y equal 0 okay so let's see if this works I have no idea really and there's uh, these are the big ones and now we get the small ones but we forgot to say life equals 2 because if life is smaller than 0 we put it back into the pool and every time we put something back into the pool using pool.free this reset method is called so that this thing acts like a new object so we actually have to set everything back to standard stuff um, yeah now these are new because they are big and these are taken from the pool let's make this a little bit more visible by saying the pool gives us really huge objects um, 90, 110. So now these are really huge objects, and if we need them again, they are not this huge. Uh, the pool only has a certain amount of uh, these objects that we already created. So if we draw like a lot of them, we see that at first they uh, they were small, and then we saw the big ones. So the small ones were old, and the big ones were new created. Now we can create a uh, few more small ones and then it needs to create some big ones again so if we suddenly yeah we can't even do that anymore <laughs> I'm not able to d uh, to draw this many water drops that we actually need because now the pool has a bunch of these small ones uh, of these reused objects and doesn't need to create new ones like it would now I just I just reset this screen with the R button um, I put this into this project but you don't care about that um, in the beginning it has to create them all that's why they're big and then it can reuse them so I hope you understood this and I explained this well enough um, yeah there is actually because this came from the let me show you the particle effects tutorial um, there is a specific particle effect pool so this is just like our swimming pool they extended the pool for particle effect and then made all that stuff like you have to do it in the particle effect pool so there is particle effect pool and a pooled particle effect like this water which implements poolable there's also a particle effect um, yeah this it, it looks like this uh, class pooled effect extends um, particle effect implements poolable so this is just a particle effect um, which implements poolable Alright, so I can show you that too, but this episode is already pretty long, isn't it? Yeah, half an hour. But, okay, I'll just show you. Here's our particle effects tutorial. And we see we have the particle effect. And we started and everything. So right now, we just use one particle effect. Let's actually change that in our main. No, in the splash. We want to have the particle effect tutorial there it is let's try it out and it's working just like in the last video again here we have the particle effect and if I restart the screen 
it yeah it appears and disappears so we want to make this similar to the yeah to the other screen that we just created so at first we obviously need a pool and in this case it's the particle effects to a uh, pool particle effect pool or something like that is that correct let's call this pool and it's actually called like that good and then we need the active array private array pooled effect um, effects and we are going to re okay import this and we are going to rename the um, effect to prototype just so that we know what we are talking about so now what this is doing we can remove this um, it's creating this prototype particle effect and in the end it's disposing it so the texture uh, of the sprite and everything is disposed so now we just need to create the other stuff like the pool equals new particle effect pool and this has a, a little bit special constructor it actually takes the prototype and the initial capacity so how many of these particle effects should already be created ready for uh, usage let's say I don't know 25 or actually let's say 0 and how many particles are going to be stored in the pool maximum which is gonna be I don't know 100 and we have to move this under where we create the par uh, the prototype of course um, then we also need the active array which is called effects equals new array of pooled effect and right so the particle effect let's actually have a look at these classes um, is nothing more than a pool which extends the pooled effect and the pooled effect is just the particle effect with the added um, free uh, method here so usually like in the pooling tutorial we would say um, where is it here we would say pool dot free to free an object so to put it back into the pool but here we can call the free on the object because it knows what pool it it, it, it actually is in so this is kind of useful um, but yeah we will probably use that so there we go new pooled effect and yeah this is actually okay for now I guess Pff, yeah it's okay um, we just need to make sure need to make sure to actually render these so for pooled effect effect in effects we wanna at first uh, yeah draw it obviously um, effect dot draw with the sprite batch and the delta time so we update it and we wanna see if it's completed and if it is take it out of the active array and put it back into the pool so if effect dot is complete um, effect uh, um, nope effects dot remove value the effect and check it using the equals equals comparison which is this one here but I just explained that a minute ago so whatever um, also we wanna put the effect back into the pool and this is where we call effect dot um, free which is the same we could also do it like pool dot free effect this is pretty much exactly the same well I just showed you this effect dot uh, free this pooled effect of free method so alright um, 
now we also have to make them uh, yeah that we can put them on the screen so set another input listener actually input processor but yeah it's our one uh, it's our input listener listener touch direct return true and then um, pooled effect effect um, equals pool dot obtain again this is all very similar of course um, then we say effect dot set position screen x minus screen y plus gdx dot graphics dot get height and we are pretty much done now we just need to act the, uh, to add this effect into the array um, which is called effects add effect alright so this should actually yeah this should actually be fine already I bet I forgot something I always do that but no I didn't do you see this a bunch of these explosions which look really shitty but who cares um, yeah actually stored in the particle effect pool and this is really resource friendly for the memory for the computing power um, still this is probably a little bit overpowered on Android but on desktop it definitely works fine um, let me just make sure that I'm actually showing you the correct yeah okay so now we can actually get some information like how many yeah it's just some information about the pool so gdx.app.log um, pool stats or something and it's gonna say uh, for example active effects and well active is enough and this is gonna show us effects.size which is how many um, pooled effects are in this array then we also want to see the uh, how many are there in the pool so free yeah free means in the pool you know so let's say pool dot get free and let's actually add off how many um, pool dot max um, and then let's add what can we add? Yeah, we can um, see how many there were, like the record, um, how many free, yeah, things there were. You know what I'm talking about, hopefully, because I don't. Uh, <laughs> record is pool dot max. All right, no, not pool dot max, pool dot peak so it's the, uh, it says the highest number of free objects yeah pretty self-explanatory hopefully um, let's try it out so there we go we can see down below that there is no active no free and yeah no record <laughs> number uh, of pool so uh, of effects so let's just add one effect oops these were three but who cares um, yeah just watch what happens down here when I draw around on the screen you see when I draw there are some active obviously uh, effects which are the ones that we see on the screen um, free always increases when active decreases because we take them from the active array and move them into the pool now we see it we took we take a lot out of the pool and move them into active and now we move them back into free uh, into the pool and we see that we had 58 um, 
yeah, effects on the screen at the same time as a record. So let's just go crazy with this. And we can see in the active how many we got. And we want to get over 58. Ah, come on, we can do it. Over 58, I want to see 60 or something. Ah, I'm not able to do it. But I think that was already above it. Yeah, we got 60. So it's hard to get over 60 um, particle effects at a time with one mouse. So we can probably say we just need a maximum of, let's say, 70. So that's some kind of buffer there. So there we go again. Yeah. This is how to use the particle effects pool, which is, oops, what am I doing? How did I do that? Okay, cool. Discovering new features of Eclipse that I don't understand. Um, anyway, this is how to use the particle effect pool. And um, yeah, hopefully I explained that well enough as well. Um, have fun playing around with your particle effects, with your um, better performance now uh, in the pooling and blah 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 um, yeah thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next episode